So Touch Designer and Bitwig Studio are now connected via TD Bitwig, which is um, a suite of modules inside of Touch Designer interacting with Bitwig Studio. And Bitwig Studio, with the last update, got some kind of uh, extension to connect Bitwig with Touch Designer. And I want to show you in this video how it works and maybe a basic example what you can do with it. And we start here with um, Bitwig. So inside of Bitwig, you go to settings, you go to controllers, you add a new controller, of course, and you go to derivative and you choose touch, touch designer. You add it and then you get some default values. Um, basically, Bitwig now runs some kind of HTTP server in the background on uh, the address 127.0.0.1. It's probably not an HTTP server, but at least it looks to me this way. And it listens on port 8088. And this also hints at the possibility that you can run Bitwig on a different PC that then you run a touch designer. So you have maybe an interface on one PC and Bitwig Studio runs on a different PC or something like that. So this is basically the um, network address you can um, send messages to Bitwig. Okay, so we leave it here basically with the default settings. We just create a new project here, empty one. And then we go to touch designer. So this is how touch designer looks. It's more like a visual coding environment, uh, something like the grid. But here you can basically go into sub patches. So we are already inside of a sub patch called project one, as you can see here. You can zoom out with the mouse wheel and we can also zoom in and see then the sub patch. So inside the sub patch here, we delete basically everything by using right click and click and drag and then just hit delete. So to connect basically this project with Bitwig, we need at least some kind of module in here. And on the left side, you see there's a palette and we can choose from TD Bitwig here and we choose Bitwig main. You need at least to have one Bitwig main inside of a component or a project. I think a project at least to have one of these uh, Bitwig main modules in there. You can see it's already connected, one connected. So we are already connected to Bitwig Studio on this IP address with this port. Pretty nice. So right from the get go, we are connected. No problems at all. So uh, what we can do now is uh, to use here different module, let's let's say Bitwig track. So with this module, we can interact with the current selected track of Bitwig Studio. Uh, when we select here this module, you can see on the right side in the inspector track is instrument one. It's the first instrument we have here in the background selected by Bitwig Studio. And you can see that it's selected by uh, this small little white triangle here. We can also hit your next track in the inspector of touch designer. We go to the second track, audio two, right? You also can see here we selected audio two. So we can already interact here with Bitwig Studio inside of touch designer. Uh, what we want to do is we want to create a small little interface for it. Uh, so you can see how kind of how, how it works in, in, you know, on a very simple basis. Um, so we want to create here, let's say, a um, small little button. Uh, we can create these buttons here by just double clicking on the empty space and you get this uh, OP create dialog here. And you want to use here comp and it's a button. And the button itself, you can switch here to the viewer mode so we can interact with it. And you can see the button itself has two states. So off state, on state. Uh, that's not what we want. We want to have a trigger. So we select the button itself here and we go to the right uh, inspector here and say button type is momentary. So now it's like trigger, right? We can also rename this to previous. We can duplicate this here with copy and paste. Oh, actually, that's, that's not what I wanted. Uh, copy, paste, um, and then call this next. Um, and then we want to, yeah, see how it looks like here on the parent, um, 
transparent view. You can see it. Everything is basically here yeah, on the bottom left corner on top of each other. So it's not really nice. So I'm going back in here and create a container. And it's basically, if you are familiar with HTML, it basically works in the same way. So I'm creating a basically a div. Inside of this div, I have some children's here. And I connect here the visual output with the container. I can see we have now here on this uh, parent container, we have the same outcome. We select here this container, go to children, and you can align it, maybe left to right. You can add a bit of spacing. Uh, maybe let's go to five here. Um, and then we change the size of the container itself. So let's go to 100. That's maybe too small. Let's go to 110. Height is a bit smaller. Let's go to 40. Okay. So now we uh, cropped here basically the the size of the container to contain these two buttons. Um, then we want to add sliders to change the volume, for instance. So we use here one slider. We call the slider volume. We copy the slider and call it N. And then we do the same thing here. We use a container, parent container. Um, uh, we use the visual outputs here group this together, do the same thing, children maybe align top to bottom, top to bottom, bit of spacing, five, and layout, the sizing is also a bit different. Let's go to one, five, the height is, I don't know, 50, and it's okay. So now we have basically two containers. Um, each contains sub um, interface elements here. And we send basically these two out to our parent element here. You can see we have these two containers now on top of each other, which is not really nice. So we go here also to children and say align it top to bottom. And now it's in the top left corner. So we can change the size of the whole canvas here. Something like this. Uh, we can also introduce your children and spacing. Maybe five. Maybe margin five, 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 five. Something like this. So it's more like in the middle. Maybe you can also say center, center, center. So we center it in the middle it's maybe also nice okay so now that we have the interface elements we um, can say we want to switch this whole uh, touch designer interface into a perform mode on the top left corner it's called perform mode and then it looks like this we have basically an interface uh, application here running in a small window you can resize it you can interact with all that stuff here use the panning volume and so on. Uh, and you can use this on a touch interface, of course. So when I push this here to my second screen, and maybe I switch here to my second camera, um, it looks like this, right? And then you can say, push here these buttons, you can use the sliders, and then interact with everything. So you can build basically touch touch screen interfaces with the with the touch designer that's why it's called touch designer because you can create touch interfaces um, so i move this back up here under my desktop and we can get out of this perform mode by using um, escape so back in here we have to connect now the value outputs of these buttons and these sliders so we use here select need chop channel operator connect here previous next volume panning 
With the select then we can switch the select into viewer mode so we can interact with it and we can hover over these values here and you can see we have now this small little white triangle. Um, so we head over here to our Bitwig track thing. Uh, go back to select one and say uh, button two is next track, export shop. So we just click and drag it. Previous track, export shop. Slider one is volume. We have this here, export shop. This is the panning, export shop. Bam, that's it. So now we can switch to perform mode, um, resizes. It's probably better to give this here a better initial sizing. Um, but that's how it is. So now we can switch here to the next first track, which is instrument one. We can change the volume. Next track, volume. We can also um, interact here with the panning, uh, probably on the left side here. Ah, we have to change the range to minus one, plus one. But you can see it works. So you can create these kind of interfaces with Bitwig Studio. It's also um, possible to uh, go back from Bitwig to Touch Designer. Um, so we can say, for instance, um, select here maybe volume, the volume slider, and you can go to view mode here and say volume, export volume to the value of the volume slider, export job, right? And then when you go to perform mode here, you have different volumes there. Um, let's resize this here. You can see the volume slider then jumps to the current value of this, um, yeah, of this uh, track. So you can interact in both directions, directions basically with touch designer and this TD Bitwig thing. Um, yeah, that's just a simple example, actually. Uh, there's more to it, right? You can also get informations here for the song. You get informations for, uh, for the notes you're, that are currently playing. Uh, so you can interact also with clips and so on. There are also some beta uh, modules here. I haven't tried them out. Clip follower, clip timer. So uh, it's not like that you can only uh, interact with the track itself. There are a lot of modules for um, for Bitwig uh, certain things inside of um, Touch Designer. And you can create basically interfaces inside of Touch Designer for Bitwig Studio, or you can create visuals for stuff, uh, for signals coming out of Bitwig Studio, right? There's also a website here on bitwig.com um, where it explains a lot of stuff. There are also some links to certain things. Um, then there's here a Bitwig guide on the Touch Designer Wikipedia page. It explains all the things. Um, let's switch here to Bitwig Main. The Bitwig Main comp serves as a central communication hub, like I said, for the DD Bitwig system and is responsible for relaying most of the information between Bitwig session and TD Bitwig. So it tries to explain you all these modules inside of Touch Designer, what you can do with it. Also, you have some examples. So it's pretty helpful actually to dive into this. And that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. If you want to have more of these tutorials about Touch Designer, maybe also Touch OSC or Open Stage Control and Bitwig Studio, then let me know. I can do some tutorials, I have a bit of base knowledge about all of these tools. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Leave a like if you liked the video, leave a subscription and thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.